Welcome to the 25.8 Studios podcast, recorded live at the Stude whenever we can. <laughs> in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Why did I say it that way? Why was I trying to sell it like, hey, do you, do you have a rubber chicken? Do you want a rubber chicken? <laughs> On Sunday, Sunday. Um, so, all right. In the last week, the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Um, we had an awesome commercial on, and I'm very proud of it. Mm-hmm. But also, the Scranton School District is doing stuff again, and it's very frustrating <laughs> as a as a taxpayer. Of course. And as a relative of, of a teacher. Any headline. And as friends of teachers. Any headline that you would have read in the last few weeks. I mean, it's it's pretty pretty frustrating. And I'm not even, you know, affected by the Scranton School District. My children don't go there. I've never been there. But, but I think in a weird way, it's, it, it affects the surrounding it school does. districts. It does. And it just, you know, as a parent myself, I would just hope that somebody would be as concerned, you know, for my children as an outsider as I am for theirs. So, um... Oh, that was really nice. Well, I care. I do. <laughs> so um, I uh, I hit up Mr. Tom Borthwick and asked him to, to come in and get, in and get us up to speed because I am not as familiar with the administration, education, school district information dissemination as I would like to be. So Tom has a great way. He's been a good friend of ours for a couple of years, and he just has a great way to talk to me like I'm a like I'm adult. He is very smart and yeah. very knowledgeable. So, um, I, 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 I hope for anybody who's listening or, or watching, I, 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 I hope that, um, you know, look, just as you're trying to be, you know, creative problem solvers and constructive in, in what's going on and, and, and trying to do a good job, I, I think we as citizens are trying to do the same thing too. So I, I, you know, I just, I get, tell me if I'm crazy. I just, I don't want anybody to feel like, you know, we're taking pot shots or we're doing no. stuff like that. Like I, I said, think, we I genuinely think, care. I think constructive criticism is good. And at the end of the day, you know, we want everyone involved in, in what's going on to mm-hmm. succeed and, and, and have a, a good outcome for everything. Agreed. You know, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't bastardize anybody on the teacher level, the school board level, or the administration level. You know, I just, I just want that. It's an equal opportunity forum, if you will. (laughs) Yeah. And, and you know what, if you're from Scranton, usually that's how your family operates. You're sitting around the, you know, when you do have time to sit around for dinner, Mm -hmm. it's usually like, Billy, you did this wrong. You did that wrong. Well, dad, you did this wrong. And it, you know. But everybody wants to help each other in the end. I think, yeah, I think at the end of the day, like the intention is good. Maybe, maybe, Mm -hmm. maybe the. Maybe the execution isn't as great, but, you know. <laughs> At least you're talking. Yeah. The communication. My mom and dad were, were, you know, could be mean to me when I was doing stupid stuff. But, me too, you know, but I, I deserved it, it looking yeah, back. <laughs> absolutely. So um, give a listen to Mr. Borthwick, and then next week we have um, DJ Bourne. DJ Bourne on. Um, uh, Spinderella's brother from Salt and Pepper. Salt and Pepper. Salt and Pepper, and There's the no official, R. the official '90s DJ for the I Love the '90s tour. Um, he's got amazing stories, and really, really look forward to, uh, to putting that out too. Um, that it? That's it. Let's get to the intro. <laughs> All right, so um, here we are again with Mr. Tom Borthwick. Tom, how are you? Better than a lot of other people. <laughs> All right, so um, and we're also here with Stacy Toy, obviously. What the hell? Hey, well, we do an intro. Hey, so y'all. we don't need to. We don't. <laughs> I introduce. We talk. Stacy and I but talk thank about you. you. Thank afterwards. you for not forgetting about me. Tom is a thank Tom you. is a very chivalrous man, whereas I am. Well, I admire that, Tom. Thank you. I do my best. <laughs> I, I'm part of the hashtag me also. <laughs> so um, just to get us up to speed, last time we talked about the Scranton School District, their budget deficit and um, proactive ways to kind of kind of get us back to solvency and, and make sure we don't cut jobs or, or programs or make sure kids don't lose out on some stuff. So what's happened since then? Well, <laughs> in a nutshell. So I guess you could also... Not just say what has happened, but what has not happened. And what has not happened is that the deficit has not been closed. They have reduced the amount of layoffs in the district from 89 to 51, but they're still axing programs. So 
Yeah, but when you talk when you talk about the layoffs, right? So how many teachers got letters that they could possibly be? So laid over a hundred. So the way they did it was they they picked programs that they just deemed uh, expendable, like literally every library is gone. The library exists, but the librarian isn't there. That, which is basically saying Oz is there, but the great and powerful Oz is not there. Yes, it, actually, that cut is probably the single most egregious, and and I and I'm going to tell you a couple of reasons why they're doing it. Number one, most librarians are going to be way up on the pay scale, so they're going to have master's degrees because they have to to be a librarian. Right, and, and I don't think a lot of people realize that. No, and and not only that, librarians aside from having, you know more qualifications and degrees than everybody else, they'll have more years in the district because it takes a long time to get that master's degree while you're teaching full time. So they're going to be exponentially saving dollars by laying off people making 60 a year, as opposed to the untenured teachers who might be making 38 or 39. So they wiped out the library program, pick some other. Uh, why is that important? Oh, why is, and, and, and I'm not. And I'm, no, no, no. Okay, yeah, I don't want to come to a, from a place of like I'm. I'm no, that no, no, stupid. No. no. So here's the thing about libraries. I'm an English teacher, uh, and I have, and and I'm and I'm relatively certain I'm good at my job, but librarians can sift through information, access information, and determine the validity of it, validity of information in a way that that blows me out of the water. And I teach AP students, and I teach uh, professionally at, at college as well. I teach at Marywood. I make my students at Mary would um, go and talk to a librarian. You must use the library and talk to a librarian. And they come back and they're like, oh my God, that was, I learned so much. Who would have thought? And and the thing is, I think the problem is you get a lot of people in power who are ignorant of, of the value of libraries because there's the internet. No, no, no. Internet, not only does it's the It's not internet, a library. <laughs> yeah. Not only does it not replace a library, it doesn't replace a librarian because information literacy is now doubly, triply important. You know, you hear this idiotic epidemic of fake news. It's been the job of librarians to differentiate, to differentiate for us. Mm -hmm. And now we need that skill more than ever, especially when you have this weird kind of national double speak, where if you just don't like something, it's now fake. Right. No, no, no. You, you need to have the, the like analytical ability to figure this stuff out. You get that at a library. Yeah, there's no Siri for a library. You no. can't just walk in and say, hey, Siri, where's this or where's that? You need no. a librarian. Exactly. And so that that cut really uh, upsets. I mean, all the cuts upset me, but that one, you're going to watch the district have massive, massive problems because there's we, – we dealt with something similarly at Riverside. They laid off a, libra a librarian – and we lost a full-time librarian in the high school and our scores immediately plummeted. And, and I said that that was your standardized test scores yeah, plummeted. And be, that, that would be because not only do librarians teach you about information, they, they foster a genuine love of reading like, Oh, we got this new book in that you're going to love, or, Oh, I'm going to put that order in for that book. I know you're going to. So when, when you get a recommendation, you get to know the kids who walk in and out, you can foster their reading growth. and growth, yeah. of course. So, and, or, or make, you know, oh, you're reading on, you know, this, maybe this is like a book for, you know, young adult novel. Well, I've got one that's really going to step, it steps up the game and you're yeah. going to love it. And so you're, you're here, Lord of the Flies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you get all, all of that with, with the librarian and they're, they're just going to cast that aside to save money. Uh, no, but what, but so, but what, so mo like moving forward, like not only just librarians, who else? got letters because because they're talk of talk of what I, th I think the thing that happened was is that that they said in a meeting a couple of weeks ago we're going to furlough 51 teachers but then like it jumped to like 102 yeah. so the way the, the reason for that is they they included their people like the librarians and then the programs that they were going to get rid of and some consolidation and special ed and they also gave literally every single untenured teacher a furlough letter. And that gives every us single. every single untenured teacher now, got one. For, so I've talked to teachers, but for people who don't understand, some of these individuals have been trying to get a job in the district for years. And they got one finally. And, and now they finally they got, got one and now they're yes. going to get canned. Yes. Possibly. So, possibly, yeah. And, and I think the reason that they did that is to give them leverage because – even though they say 51 and I'm sure the public is going to hold them to that or less, right. they now have the option to go higher should they not be able to plug this gap. And they have not. We're looking at what, 3.7 million that they still need to find. And it's well, wasn't not, it 4 million last time. So we've yeah, only they're, saved 300,000. Uh, so far. Yeah. I mean, even the cuts that they're making with the 51, you, you don't make very much money the first year of layoffs. You have to 
get, they have to be gone for two because you're paying unemployment compensation. Now, that's another reason why I think that they sent furlough letters to every single untenured teacher. A lot of them wouldn't qualify for unemployment because they haven't been empl- you know, employed for very long. Right. So there are all these kind of financial, I wouldn't call them shenanigans, but I guess deft moves that, that they're trying to make. But ultimately, I don't think you can walk away from what's happening with without saying, wow, this is just going to devastate kids' education. And I, I, I genuinely feel that not every avenue has been explored yet. Now, do I think that they have been working hard? Yes. Do I think that some of them have been doing a very good job? Yes. But When you say some of them? So it said them as in the school board. So school director, excuse okay. me. So, you know, I know that a lot of them are working hard and I know that none of them find pleasure in any of this whatsoever. But the two things that I think. Well, it's kind of like a zero reward job. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the one one thing that is definitely missing that is very problematic for me is a concrete plan for how this gets fixed. So they're going to slash and burn right now. Right. When are the librarians coming back? I want a date. You know, I could eat that. I could Easier. S- if, if I knew it's an easier pill to swallow. Yes. Yes. And so if I knew that the, that that was the goal and you say passed a resolution that said, we'll phase it back in as soon as the money's available or whatever, even if it's just a, like, even if it's a non-binding resolution, it was just a statement of will, which they can do. I would feel better about the cuts. So you could say, yeah, 51 people are going, but you know what? Next year we can bring back 20 of them. And the year after that, we can bring back 20 of them. You know, if you said that great, but there's been no, nothing publicly, acknowledging that they do have a plan to restore anything. And that means that the cuts sound permanent. And again, I mean, I mean, that's, that's terrifying. Absolutely. Especially, you know, but can you, can you run down like the, the, like what discipline? So it's librarians. Yeah. So some of the, so who's, who's getting cut. Okay. So, uh, I'll, I'll save the worst for what I think is the worst for last. We got librarians out of the way. Next up, there the special ed ratios, there are caps to how many kids that special ed teachers can have on their caseloads. Uh, evidently, the district does, the, the special ed teachers don't come anywhere near those caps. So they're going to reduce the amount of special ed teachers, get, get their caseloads closer to what they're supposed to be, and they'll save money there. Uh, while that sucks, it's logical. Right. So- it uh, sucks for the special ed teachers. It does. It, yeah. And the kids. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But that one makes more sense. You know, a lot of them are overburdened already. They are. And actually, even if they're, let's say their caseload is 25 kids, you have to take care of 25 kids with special yeah. needs. That's hard. 15 kids is hard. Right. Five kids is hard. Right. So that I understand why they're doing that because we have caps for a reason. You know, uh, teachers at Riverside, they, they hit the caps right. and they do their jobs. So that one is logical, and you're going to have those people come back naturally anyway because there's a massive amount of special ed teachers in the district. They're going to retire. They're going to call those people back. So that one makes sense to me. Next up, um, they're going to be doing – so there's – I, I believe a lot of classes, is, let's say they're capped at 30 contractually. Yeah. A lot of them in a lot of buildings, let, let's say there's three second grade classes with 15 kids each. You can combine – split the third class in half, move those kids into the other classes and move the teacher to a different building. Or, you know, you can reduce the amount of teachers you have. Right. So they're doing that. Um, and so th- that would probably affect your, uh, what you would call your gen eds, right. your like regular classes. Now, uh, the next massive one that is a huge problem. And, you know, I know is personal for, for you and just because of your, your, your life, yeah. you know, and where you are professionally in, in this literal moment, right. you wouldn't be there without the arts. Correct. So at a board meeting not too long ago, the board came out and said, we're, uh, we're getting rid of gym and the arts on the middle school level. And that's absurd. And yeah. But so how did that vote go down? Um, uh, didn't it, it was like I, I vote believe, and run. I believe it was eight and one, uh, only, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, only one director voted against it. Um, but wasn't it like a mic drop vote? Not this one. They have had mic drop votes. It was like, the actual pass. See ya. Yeah, the actual uh, the vote to lay people off originally was a we vote and they left and people screamed. Um, but this one wasn't like that. They they voted. They talked. There was a lot of stuff on the docket. A lot of people spoke, um, I, if I recall correctly. But the the problem with these cuts and, and the way it was handled is it's pretty clever. You know, they got rid of them and then three or four days later turned around at, at a different committee meeting, an education meeting, committee meeting and said, oh, no, we're going to make sure they all have exposure to the arts. What does that mean? I don't. Uh, that was we all expression. have exposure. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? And. And the thing is, what I've heard, but why? But why is everybody speaking in like this 
this like Sanskrit, you know, that like that is there's nothing definitive. There's nothing. It's all speculation, conjecture. Yes. It's all we think we we might part look of it, what we did. And and I know some of these these school directors, and 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 I happen to like some of them. Yeah. Um. Some of them I don't know, and I can't say good or bad or indifferent about them. Sure. Either, but it it really boggles my mind. And at the same time, too, I don't. Th- Unfortunately, like these these school directors got on board of a ship that was that already had holes in it. it so yeah, it was so already can, it was already right, underwater. So, so let's do. And it just seems it just seems like everybody's you know putting holes in the boat, and then there's not enough fingers to to plug the holes. So can you like you've been interested in politics and this for a very long time? Can you go back and see like is there a catalyst? Maybe years ago or like because because to me, like even when I'm thinking about it, I'm like, it seems like that these are these are the the repercussions for decisions made years ago. Yeah, but there's so many the, the list is very long. So the, the problem but is, isn't that a problem in and of itself? Yeah, that the yeah. list is very there's, long. There's no there's no one thing you can point to as a catalyst. Just so what the district or has it what, been decades of mismanagement. Well, yeah, I mean, decades, yes. Uh, but if you were to look at, so first of all, if you look at how how directors talk about this, they blame the state, and the state, to an extent, is to blame because of the way the pension system is structured. The state screwed it up, and we're paying for it. However, you can predict what your pension payments are in the future, which means you know that year after year you're going to be paying. Roughly X. this, yeah, yeah, roughly X. So if you know that, you should plan for it. Right. They did not. So that that's a massive problem. They knew it was happening, but they just kept borrowing to balance the budget. That is probably the most egregious thing that caused this immediate problem. They routinely borrowed to dig themselves out of a hole, which is illogical. It's like digging a different, bigger hole. Are we just not? Are, you, are we hole. just not paying enough in taxes? <laughs> yeah, that's not the solution. I mean, some of the facts. I'm trying to figure out, like, 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 if this, like, my father's a business guy. Like, if I ran my business this way, like, he'd be like, "You're nuts." Like, what well, are you, you doing? Would ha- you wouldn't have a business. I wouldn't, I would, I'd be out of business. Yes, there wouldn't, and you wouldn't have even gotten off the ground, basically. Right. I mean, so <sighs> I'm just so pissed off at all this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we should be because there's a lot. There's yeah, a I lot to like, take in. This is like this is like trying to like this is like going down the rabbit hole of like you know, well, like yeah, some because, some strange like Oliver Stone's America where you're like yeah I mean think about what the, is this think about the repercussions that is is what people should be focused on and I think well I, I I brought up my question about like why like maybe not a catalyst but like years of of weird stuff going on that sure. probably shouldn't have been going on and I like I, like I kind of want to contrast that with the fact that like if you lose a lot of these programs and a lot of these teachers like we're seeing the ramifications of decisions made years ago today mm-hmm. you're not going to see an immediate result of of what this is going to have on the students the district the parents well you know what actually i disagree you will see an immediate result you'll immediately see a total decline in and do you think in like year one you'll see the test yeah. scores go Pfft. yeah and actually you know how i mentioned the librarians being gone right after test scores plummet we brought our librarian back last year our school per- performance profile which is a measurement the state gives us went from failing at a 55 to passing at, I believe, a 71 in one year's time. And the only measurable major difference was we had a full-time librarian again. And the kids went to the library and used it. And she taught information literacy. And, you know, are there other factors at play? Probably. But our that's administrators- That's a big jump. Yeah, that's our admin- Yes. Our administrators were- like bouncing off the wall, like we needed to improve, but we didn't even think this number was a possible number. They were giddy. They told, they gave the teachers a full week of just dress down as a thank that's you. That's your thing. Everyone gets to wear Bermuda shorts this week. <laughs> that's roughly, it's, <laughs> it's, like we, yeah, it's just the greatest thing ever. Bermuda shorts for everyone. But, you know, and, and I definitely attribute a lot of it to the return of a full-time librarian. Cause that is the only major, we didn't make any major curriculum changes. You know, the, there weren't major staff turnovers or anything like that. Everything was pretty routine except that. And, and kids are like, I want Mr. Borthwick, can I go to the library? 
Now there's a reason to, you have a librarian. So, you know, so somebody who's not trained the way a librarian is trained, is not going to be able to bring to the table what's necessary. Well, I used to do another podcast and I, and we had a librarian on, I could not believe I love librarians. What they did. Oh yeah. I, I do. They're, they're awesome people. They've they know me, so much. They, they taught me like they, how to learn, if that makes sense. Like, yep. because you need to learn how to learn, especially when you go to college, you realize oh God, yeah. how important it is and how much you really don't know. But the librarians help me to learn how to learn. Yep. So they're so, cutting so, literally all of them. There mm-hmm. will not be a single librarian in the Scranton school district. And that's anywhere. Nope. Not even a master control librarian. Nope. They're, they're like, does your, like, does your head go like, oh, look, oh. everyone's everyone's eating Tide Pods. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I get it. Yeah, well, it's, so it's going to be something worse than Tide Pods after they get rid of these librarians. I really genuinely don't think that the people who are making this decision understand the the, the gross impact that that one will have. And I brought it up to them. Um, and, you know, I get responses like, well, Abington doesn't have a librarian. I'm like, yeah. So imagine how much better they could be had they a librarian. You know. Also, it's a de- we had a librarian when I was in school. They, all they, the got, time. they got rid of it uh, up there. But the thing is, you're looking at a totally different demographic. So you're looking it's at kind of rural. It it is, but they're more affluent than, than Scranton. Scranton. Yeah, there's less money. So much poverty. So think about that poor kid who, who who's not gonna who has nothing but a love of books to sustain him or herself. So that that's a great point to make because someone who is not is not afforded the opportunities that I had is now getting even less. Mm-hmm. The, yeah, and that's the thing. Uh, the programs need... Like for, let's, let's, not, let's not talk about contracts. Let's not talk about money. Let's not talk about any of that. Let's talk, talk about Let's talk about opportunities mm-hmm. for kids because grade school gets you ready for middle school. Middle school gets you ready for high school. High school gets you ready for college or the workforce or whatever you got to do. They are taking away like any coping skills, any creativity, yes. anything that allows them to interact as a team, any, and, and I, and I don't mean sports. I mean, like, here's a class, you know, an art project or something that and we can work on together. Scholarships come straight from that too. Oh, sure. I mean, there was so many kids. My family couldn't afford all of that stuff. So I had to go and actively join these, you know, different clubs and in different things and organizations in order for me to leave the area. And that's why we came back. I know Mark, you came back here too, because we wanted I to bring opportunity here <laughs> because it, but if you want Scranton to be great, you have to make great things here in Scranton and give them a reason to come back to to want. I mean, these is great it? Things. That's a great point, especially because think about think about the real world impact of of everything you just said. Scranton actually is dealing with the, the city is dealing with a resurgence, and you could tie that directly to the arts community. Mm-hmm. You know, my students at Riverside go to First Friday every month. They look forward to it. And after they graduate, they keep going. Why? Because it's wonderful. You're looking at the talent displayed by individuals who are homegrown. We're looking at NEPA. Mm-hmm. We're looking at yes, Scranton. Networking. And we it's, want to support yeah. each other. And, and and so downtown is being revitalized. And that is the anchor that 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 is that is helping that to happen. And you're and so the school district's going to turn around and say, yeah, that's not really actually valuable. We're going to cut it. Yeah, that doesn't make sense at all. That's what brings people back here. Yeah, and and, and if you're going to take it away, then you're not going to have people come yeah, back. Then you're going to have everybody want to leave the area, like sure. many people do. I mean, I've been all over the world, and I know Marky has too. And but we came back here because we wanted to bring, you know, better. There's nowhere else that felt like home. That's right. Sure, uh, but if you see it going to hell, it, it makes it difficult here. to to want. And, and think about the the impact. So we, there's a quantifiable impact of the arts on Scranton's revitalization. So. They haven't looked at cutting any extra extracurricular sports on the high school level. How much economic revitalization happens in the city of Scranton? Be- I, I got a ration of shit thrown at me because I actually went and researched the percentage of high school athletes who actually go to play professional sports as adults, like as a profession. And I think it was point zero zero six. Yeah, and and you, yeah, of course, some kids are gonna. Get and I got and I got crap that like I don't want to crap on sports. Like I played sports, and then when it got like serious at the high school level, I was like, I don't need to get yelled at. I can just stay home and have that happen. But there's still scholarship opportunities sure. for them to go to and, and, college. And, 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 and I and money, I totally yeah. and I totally get that. But if you're if you're trying to set like everybody lives in the moment. Everyone lives in like this moment right now. Nobody thinks about tomorrow. Nobody plays chess. You know. I'm sorry, like to people who like love sports, but most of their kids aren't going to go on to play professional sports. Yeah. And it's, it's deeper than that too, because the whole idea of extracurricular is that it's extra. And so it's like, it's like, it's like, it's, it's, you don't need the cherry, but yeah, if you're taking, if you're taking on your Sunday, a music class that's required or an art class that's required, you, you are benefiting for everyone benefits. Mm -hmm. Literally every kid 
benefit. Even if you don't participate, you benefit. Yes. So how many how many kids in the Scranton school district are on the varsity football team? So comparatively, so you have literally everybody benefiting, or, and then a select few. Yeah, and so again. I, sports do a lot of good for a lot of kids. I've seen it happen as a teacher. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, it helps instill discipline. You can talk to a coach and say, hey, this kid's giving me trouble. You know, make sure that you straighten this kid out. And and it's a great relationship and it's wonderful. But prioritization is important. And then yes. a headline in the other, the other day was, you know, directors cut arts may look at cutting yes, sports. Yes, I shared that yeah. on my page for me. Yeah, I'm like, oh, well, mm-hmm. priorities. And yeah. And so you see, but, but, but okay, so. I, I think there's a generational misconception about the importance of these programs. Oh, sure. And I and I and I think that a lot of and look at the end of the day, these are you know whatever I'm espousing from my soapbox of the fabric chair is <laughs> is just an opinion that I hope is rooted in some sort of education that I've I've, I've actually researched it. I, I think that you know people think you know art today is like frou frou and you know whatever where they don't realize the emotional, psychological, and economical impact. Is that a word economical? Yeah, it sure. is. Okay. An economic impact of, of, of what it, the future is for these people. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. we live in a world right now where content is king. Yeah. For Create, whatever we do. Creators, creators are the ones. Creators. That's what, what do you think art is? It's, cre- it's taking something and turning, it's taking nothing and turning it into something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, think about Two gra- minutes ago, that wasn't there. I made that. Mm-hmm. Think about graphic design. Just think, sure. Think about how important that is. Yeah. You while know? everyone's watching the Olympics right now, just realize an artist put all those graphics up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. An, an artist an designed army. every outfit. An oh, army of artists. Army. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the economic impact of that is massive. Absolutely massive. And and who aren't millionaires? These artists. No, of course not. Of course not. But they love. But they love what they do. They, right. They, it's mm-hmm. a craft. You hone it just sure. like you do anything that you. Practice. And that's just. And I think that's just that you can say that about carpentry. You can yeah. say that about plumbing. Yes. You can say that about. Metalwork, you can say that about any of the trades. I think it's the same thing. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. of course. Like, it, I, like the guy, like it, I can't paint Monet, but I can build a house. That's just as impressive. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Is. And and you know, I always think about my own experience. Sorry for th- pointing at you. No, you, I, point, point. <laughs> I heard it's you, rude. Whatever. <laughs> pew, point, pew. point all you want. <laughs> um, that guy. There you go. So you know, fourth grade, I had a violin put in my hands, and I played violin all throughout my entire career in the Scranton school district. Terribly at the beginning though. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, I was second chair finally at the end of it. So I, I was pretty good, <laughs> but th- that led me, you know, when I was in ninth or 10th grade, I, I picked up a guitar and you know, my buddies and I started a band and music is a massively important part of my life and I wouldn't be who I am without it. People need creative outlets. I mean, you look at some of the horribly, frustrated, deprived human beings who run our country, they, they probably need an outlet, you know, maybe, maybe. Well, wait, uh, uh, let, let, okay, let's talk. I hate to talk about, and we're totally getting off topic here. Whatever. But, but anyways, like in prison, they do art therapy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Art therapy. Oh my God. And right. there's a lot of prisoners going like, I didn't have this when I was growing up. Yes. Maybe I wouldn't have went to a life of crime. Yes. Yeah. The, a lot of the uh, students I teach at Marywood this particular semester are art therapy students. Of course, it's going to be therapeutic and good for your brain to to have an outlet for things. People need outlets. Creative problem mm-hmm. solving. Yes. You know. Oh man, divergent thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, the, filling in bubbles all day is not making you a better person. No. You know, taking these standardized exams. So, so what do you think these kids look forward to? You know, they don't. They don't look forward to sitting there and learning how to drill for, a, a, you know, a grammar exam. No mm-hmm. one looks forward to that. No. I teach English, and I find it abhorrently boring. Right. You know, I'm I'm interested in the creative side, the mm-hmm. craft of language. You know, how how did this author create this image that helped connect this way? Well, no matter what grade you are in. You get to explore that either either shallowly or with depth if you're creating anything. Any form of creation requires a different kind of thinking that makes you a better person. Mm-hmm. Oh, and every book in that library was created. That's yeah. right. And I know like you mentioned in the last podcast with Tom about Victoria um, and how art like really helped oh, her. Oh, saved your life, man. It really did. Like. There's so many people that go through so At much. At least that's what she said. And they don't talk to a lot of people about it because sometimes, you know, it's very difficult. But their outlet, you know, these 
creative outlets are the things that end up saving their life or giving them a reason to like keep going and just, yeah. you know, follow through. I mean, it's just, that's super important. So I would argue that that's just as important as any of the core. Algebra academic- never saved anybody's life that I know of. The Pythagorean <laughs> and theorem has wanted me to hang myself. You obviously past, didn't watch Stargate. But- <laughs> yeah, I, you sorry. know what? I was, I was actually just thinking of that. Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. Come on. You obviously algebra. did not watch. I'm sorry. I'm not into that. No, no, no. Andy Cohen <laughs> doesn't know it, but. I am into Andy Cowan. Well, <laughs> bravo. <laughs> yeah, your point's well taken. The, the thing is, people have different priorities. And, you know, what you're getting into, especially with, like, requirements of three years of high school math, not everyone's going to need calculus to function. So why are we making them take it? Mm-hmm. You know, I think about what my class, this is my class schedule as a senior. I had AP European History, AP Literature. Uh, then I had Creative Writing journalism, computer music, where we're learning, I, I think I brought it up last time. Yeah, there was like yeah, Pro Tools mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They were, we were learning how to compose music digitally and my orchestra class. That's an awesome schedule. It is awesome. It was all creative. Mm-hmm. And, I, and guess what? I went on and I got an MFA, a mm-hmm. Master of Fine Arts in Creative Writing. You know, and... Published I, author. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I mean... I publish posts. Yeah, that, hey, every, every, you know, That's everyone, your creative outlet. Everyone, I, uh, everyone who's ever posted on Facebook is, is an author. Is a published author. <laughs> <laughs> I like all the ones who publish in all caps. Anyway. With zero punctuation. Yeah, of course. So, you know, the, that helped mold me. And, I, and maybe I don't think I'm a special case. I know that there are lots of people out there like me, like us, who've mm-hmm. been positively impacted by – arts curriculum. So when the directors, so this is my contention here. So they said, oh, we're getting rid of it all. And then a couple of days later, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. They're all going to have exposure. And I saw the collective eruption of glee and joy on Facebook. And I really, you know, in a couple of replies, I I rained on everybody's parade as is my like favorite pastime evidently. But (laughs) You well, know, at least at least you're aware. Yeah, I know. So so what I said was, at least you're not shitting on people without realizing you're doing it. Yeah, no, I totally know that. That's a, so I said I said yeah, they're not going to cut it as badly. But okay, 100 percent gets cut, and they come back, and they're like a couple of days later, and they're like, you know what? We're going to let you know that we're heroes. We're actually only going to cut 50 percent. Like, and everyone's like, hooray! We. Fifty percent is great. No, well, no, it's not. No. None of it is good. Yeah, let no me cuts. be here let in me, the first place. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. So, coming like you and I are sci-fi aficionados, big fans of it, Amen. right? Yeah, of course. So, if we, and this is going to round back to like the suggestions that you had, and I don't think that you're the guy going like I have all the answers. Oh, no, I'm just here's not. some creative solutions that maybe you guys can look into, which is what we talked about last time. Yeah. So being that you and I are sci-fi guys and, you know, I watch a lot of Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica. I'm rewatching Stargate Atlantis right I love now. Battlestar. Um, it, 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 like when they pose a problem, maybe it's a science fiction world. Maybe that maybe I'm maybe I'm not living in the real world when I think this way. They say, OK, here's here's what we can't do. Now let's fix it. Like, I don't like to me, like that doesn't make sense or it's like, okay, let's look at the things that we need and we can't get rid of them. Okay. How do, how do, what do we do with the rest of it? Yeah. That, that would have been a much more logical and admirable way to approach it from the beginning. We cannot cut any arts, any programs, you know, any music, any gym, any of that. We can't cut them. If you started from there and what are they, what are they going to save? 500 grand, you know, of, I mean, is in, in, I mean, that's basically the savings. That's it. You know, that, 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 it sounds like a lot of money, but that's just a drop in the bucket. It yes. is. And, th- th- you know, there's another thing, and I think you could actually make this work. The state caps how much you can raise taxes, and they're raising taxes 3, 3%-ish, and, they're, and that gets $1.7 million, something like that. <clears throat> you can exceed the cap by referendum. I bet you if they said, we're gonna, instead of 3%, we're going to raise it 4%, and it'll save every job and program – I bet you the the community would vote yes. I'll throw see, in an extra see, percent. But and, and I, I'm I'm going to shit on your idea. Feel free. Mm-hmm. It seems to me that we can't trust the people with the money. Well, uh, yes, yeah. and that and that would be a good. That's a good counter argument. That's why. It oh, would, okay. 
<laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I was just patting myself on the back. Oh, no. I'm you sorry. did a great job. Thank you. You're Good welcome. job, Mark. You're welcome. <laughs> you get a gold You're star. You're welcome. Yes. It's not um, a cold prickly. <laughs> I got a warm fuzzy, and I'm happy about it. Yeah. The, the thing is, and, and that's another failing. I mean, that's a cynical way to look no, at no, it. No, no, no. It's an accurate it, way to look at yeah. it. The, it the board, so when the state said, we're going to give you $2 million, you know, people rightly were like, well, what the hell is the board going to do with it? Well, they didn't save any of these jobs. I mean, they went from 89 to 51. Right. But that's not enough. And, and so- that's why I think they need con- to uh, concretely address where the money will go if they do anything when it comes to money. So let's say if they like, if we can bid out the health contract and save a million, we'll bring back companies the librarians. Do companies do that every yeah. year. Yeah. So oh, they should do that. That that's they rebid the healthcare that's an every year. Absolute no brainer for for the district and the union. But and I'm not talking like like Scranton School District with 800 and some employees. I'm talking about corporations with like like Walmart rebids their. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's part of the reason last time we were talking, I said they should make a healthcare consortium. But anyway, the the thing is, if you if you like explore these ideas, you'll you'll get somewhere, but I don't you don't hear a lot about their exploration because the board hasn't concretely said things like, we need X amount of dollars and then we could save this. We need X amount of dollars and then we'll save that. If you set up benchmarks, you'll be able to get the community behind you more. And it's like I said uh, to you earlier when we were talking, there's no plan to bring back anything that they're getting rid of. You know, people could stomach cuts if you said, look, we're going to get rid of the librarians. Maybe two years are tough, but we'll we'll get back. After two years, they're coming back. You know, I would hate it, but I would be like, okay, I know that that things will get better. Right. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that. And so what what will end up happening is these things will go. They'll never come back. And then when the district gets solvent, if it gets solvent, but let's say when it gets solvent, what are you going to do with this newfound money? That you now have. Are you going to create new programs? Or are you going to go in a different direction? You're going to hire more administrators. You know. Yeah. Gonna- what's can Can you explain that to me? Like, am I hearing like falsehoods by hearing that like last year they get the administration gave themselves a 34 percent raise? I, I it wouldn't be across the board, and I'm sure some positions got a higher percentage than others. But yeah, that that there have been. I mean, of- who? Where else do you get a 34 percent raise? You know, I don't know the exact number. It might be over the life of whatever contract or agreement they might have. But I, I know that they've been seeing raises that, you know what? It's not in a year. It's that's over a couple of years, but that's still quite a bit. Still quite a mm-hmm. Like usually like next year. If you look at wage growth as a whole in America for, let's say, 10 years, it's not. It's massive. It's not, well, 34% is yes. way higher than yeah. what average people are getting. People have been getting their Christmas bonuses cut all over in the different, you know, places around here. And I mean, and that's the other, you know, problem with raising the taxes is, I mean, not a lot of people in other areas of the workforce are getting a higher wage and, or, and everything else seems Expenses to be going go up, up wage which stagnates. is understandable again. But like you said, they've got to have something in place because I do feel that people, you know, even if they don't have a good job, they want their children to do better and they'll do whatever they need to do in order for their children to yep. have that opportunity. But if you give it to people who don't have, you know, a good sense of budgeting and, and, you know, where is this money going to go? Then like, we got to think said, about I like an investor. Yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't seem exactly. like a good investment. What am I getting for my investment? Yes. That's a great question to ask. And I think and, and, and I think if, if the board started thinking that way, the community would be more open to what's happening. You know, because if I knew that I would if I if I knew my taxes were gonna go I'd pay an extra percent on top, you know, three instead of three percent, four percent. If I knew that would bring all the librarians back, here, here I will gladly vote for this and tell everyone to vote for it mm-hmm. and do everything I can to lobby people to vote for it because that's how essential librarians are. And if you said it go four point five percent. Whatever, get that also gets you music. Boom, I'm in. And it, and I'm not saying that it has to even be taxes. It, it, there's a whole other ways, a bunch of ways to raise revenue. But if you if you can concretely offer fiscal benchmarks that can, like, hey, look, next year if we get this much, we'll bring back this. Again, it makes it more palatable. And and we haven't heard any of that. Um, and I understand that they're they're probably in almost constant damage control mode. Be- but but if you're in constant damage control mode, that to me that's like the gazelle trying to get away from the lion. Mm-hmm. You have zero like your fight or flight, and and you have zero time to 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 stop, take a breath, and figure out what is going on. Yeah, there are nine board members that you know maybe one of them could just yes. prioritize. Or I mean, hey, the superintendent gets paid well enough. Hey, superintendent, we hereby say. Come up with a plan to restore this. Tell us how long it's going to take. Go to the business manager and say, look, 
how much money are we going to have next year, the year after? Like, what's it going to look like? And how, and, or just tell the business manager, I want a fiscal plan that by the end of year five, everything's back. Here's a dumb question. Who's in charge? <laughs> it's, a, it, it's, 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 all right. So the board is technically in charge because they're the democratic, democratically elected body. Technically. So, technically, yeah. So they're in charge. The superintendent guides the district as a whole in terms of policy. The business manager is in charge of finance. So I would say your board, your super, and your business manager are probably your most important players in this game. But who tells what to who? So, uh, like, can the business manager tell the board what to do? No, no, no. The board tells everyone what to do. But Presumably, when you hire a super and a business manager, you trust what they have to say and you listen to their recommendations. All right. So uh, the superintendent's like the CEO. Functionally, yeah. And the board and the, the business manager is like the CFO. Yep. And the board is like a board on a Fortune a board of 500 directors, yeah. company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And and that it, it isn't necessarily ideal, but every kind of structure has its flaws. But the thing is, you know, and I see it a lot with not, I'm not just talking about Scranton, I'm talking about a lot of school boards. You know, not every board member is going to know education inside out. Not, not every board member is going to know finance inside out. So it's easy to walk into a room and say, what's the deal? And have, have a business manager say, but do we have nine with zero common sense? <laughs> I don't think it's a lack of common sense. I think it's probably a, co- a combination of factors. Number one, as you mentioned earlier, they don't get paid. So they have their lives. I don't envy have, their position. No, I don't. None no, of us do. Um, and, and, and again, they, they sincerely do not like what's happening. You know, who would, and they're, they are genuinely working hard, but you're not going to, you're not going to have the entire knowledge base to do things. So you're inevitably going to have to trust your administrators. And sometimes that's not going to work. So, and I'm not saying that the administration is untrustworthy, but what I'm saying is they might not see all the angles. No one sees all the angles. That's so, where you, you talk. Well, and that's why I'm actually really liking the level of community involvement and the community response to what's going on here. You know, it's one of the reasons why I post my blogs about things like I, I know so I know a lot of them have read what I wrote. Have they followed a lot of my suggestions? Not not enough. Well, now I talk to a lot of teachers who are who are unhappy that like the, like this is a revenue expense problem. Yes. At yeah. the end of the day, it boils down to a black and white revenue expense problem. Yeah. Right. They they have too much debt. They've borrowed against more than they can afford. Yep. They've they've extended their credit beyond where they could. Like, from my understanding, they for them to It'll get a loan again impossible. would be insane. The, the interest rates would be astronomical, I'm sure. Um, I'm sorry. I just got so upset that I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, you know what it was you're like? Getting was, ready to build, you're building a foundation to I make feel, a great point. You know, I feel like, I feel like a, an Olympic skier who got halfway down the mountain and forgot they were skiing. <laughs> That's what That's I feel okay. like just happened. That's okay. Um, <laughs> What the hell was I talking about? The percentages. And oh, yeah. Expenses and revenue. Yeah. Okay. So to me, and maybe this is a, like a hippie thing to say, but in in the end, the, the revenue is is for the kids and their education and, and, and what, they, what they end up doing with their lives mm-hmm. is unequatable. You can't figure out what that is. Yeah. Like the, 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 you know, but if they don't have the opportunities, right? Like to me, like this is not about, this is not about administration versus board. It should be just about the kids. Yeah. Like a team. You should be working together as a team. Yeah. yeah and and I, it seems like there's like, nobody agrees on anything. Yeah. Well, so the, the thing. I think that's the point I was getting yeah. to where it's like. It's like everyone wants things, but no one is willing to give or take, or nobody's willing to make, you know, yeah, concessions you wanna... that doesn't affect the kids. Yeah. If you want to be a hero, you should be saving the children and their focus and their opportunity first. So why don't you guys just all get together and you can all be the Just very hippie, but. <laughs> and, you know. Totally unrealistic. <laughs> yeah. Peace, love. The, the thing is, there's, so you have so many personalities and egos involved and also you have so many ideas involved and you have so many different directions and preferences it it is definitely you know an uphill battle to get people on the same page with with everything that that could be done and and i don't you know i don't i don't have none of us have all the answers we don't have all the answers and i i do think ultimately though the the responsibility is the boards and the thing is, despite the fact that, of course, I I really love and respect a lot of the people on that board, um, I've spoken to them. I you know they at least listen to me when I offer ideas. 
they even if they do the best job they can do, they still own what happens in the end. And I could understand, you know, they would be them being frustrated with the criticism that they might get. But in the end, you voted to eliminate all the librarians. That's you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The past board might have made the mistake, but it's your job to rectify it. You have no choice. And you decided that libraries don't matter. And you decided that music doesn't matter. And you decided that art doesn't matter. Y- you did. Might not be a decision you wanted to make, but you made it. So you need to own it and you need to own the consequence of that. And I don't think maybe the board, maybe board members know that, but you know, I I can respect them and still resent the decision that they're going to make. And they probably even to an extent resent the decision that they're going to make, but they still have to, they, can you look at the mirror and at yourself in the mirror and say, you've done literally everything. And the answer. Yeah, I never, I never use that. I never understand that as an explanation. Yeah. We did everything. No, you did. Did you try this? Well, no. But at least if they had, like you said, those future benchmarks, it would make the blow less as tough. And even if you had to own them, if you're trying to rectify it in the future and there's a future plan, it's not, you're not going to be the bad guy as much. Yeah. I like the way you phrase that. You're basically like saying like there are. As long as they like apologize and plan and on contrition, mm-hmm. here's here's my plan for you know pay, paying back you know making my sins right again. Yes, you know if they did that, then it would be palatable for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, can I, can I tell you how Stacy just said that? Like a parent, because well, I am one. Well, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that's what it, I mean. That's what it boils down to is like taking responsibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, Jesus, I'm fixing a it. I, I want mm-hmm. my boy to have everything. Yes. Well, I mean, I mean, so. Let's 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 go back to like let's just talk about psychologically right oh now. Oh God! <laughs> how, so how many teachers got letters? Over a hundred. Every best uh, guess. One twenty. Uh, probably around there. I know they had a big year of hiring. There's a massive amount of untenured teachers in the district as a percentage of the workforce. So if they knew this was coming, why hire all the new teachers? Well, I mean, is it because people are retiring, or it's it's a combination of factors. Like, like but my it, thing is this: like, how do you not see this coming? How know, do you? How does? How does no one get prepared they, for like? There were red flags, uh, you know, side to I, he, PJ Duffy in particular, those two guys the past couple of years, you would hear them say, we, we can't do this. We, you know, I remember Sai specifically saying you can't borrow out of a hole, you know, you, and they did, and they did year after year after year. And, and it, it, so there were people saying this is a problem, but then they just kept doing it. But now they can't borrow and they, now they can't, they can't use the band aid. They have what? So, seven weeks. Uh, yeah, they have to have it passed by, I believe. April 1st, right? April 1st, yeah. So. What an ironic day. (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) Isn't that funny? (laughs) Well, like, in in this. Are we supposed to believe it April 1st when they say. (laughs) Just kidding. No, and and this could also be a dumb question too, but I mean, does there, like, does there come a point in time where it, like, just like a vehicle or a house, do they repossess the school? I mean, like, what else? If receivership happens, that would be, you you think we're talking about. What is that? So, uh, receivership. Wait, 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 wait. How possible is it? Uh... I th- I think we'll avoid it, but there is a small possibility. If it ever happened, then goodbye, city of Scranton, because the the state will come in and they will eviscerate everything. Everything will be gone. There will be zero arts. So th- this board is preserving some of it, and we still think it's egregious that they're they're not keeping all of it. Well, the state would come in and get rid of everything. Everything's gone. Uh, contracts get erased, and I mean, I mean, literally, like union contracts, they gone, come in and they invalid, go gone, gone, because bankruptcy. That's basically what is happening it's 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 the public form of bankruptcy and uh it would be the worst case scenario and again so you could say that argue that the directors are are avoiding the worst case scenario and i do believe that they're going to but tell me how you're bringing the librarians back yes like the future tell me tell me about the future yes because well how do we how do we get back to solvent responsibility well i think that i mean i mean i think that's the ultimate like what everybody's trying to say is like even if you're setting benchmarks it's like I, I think this town is tough enough to take it on the chin a little bit. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But we need to know that afterwards you're going to buy me a beer. 
Yes. yes. And it could be just well little bits at Welcome. a time. It's, if very, need it's be. very West Side of you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you can punch me in the face. But you better give me something in return for it to so make us even. And, and it better be a beer. And it better be a beer. But they're not. But there's no. It's just. It's just we're gonna hit you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That. Yeah. Exactly. So I think. So. So of course solvency is important. Their immediate concern as a board and and uh, is to get through to April first and survive. They that is understandably their number one priority. I do think a lot of what they're doing will produce long-term savings. Will it be enough to avert a disaster next year? No. That's a problem. We might be dealing with this again next year. Oh, it, it'll be, it's going to be worse next year. The pension payments are going to be higher. Healthcare costs don't go down. It will be worse next year. Maybe the budget should have taken more math classes. <laughs> People <laughs> well, in and charge that's the thing. doing that's, the budget. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. And, and the business manager, the former business manager who conveniently retired just as this, you know, exploded. Uh, his name is Greg Sunday. You know, He's uh, he he's gone. He doesn't have to worry about it. And he. But how could? But you should be how teaching can the these, kids this how right can, now. Oh my god! Like how, break this down for the students, so the students do get real life experience. He, he should. How he, is the school doing? What are they doing to all of this? Yeah, that should be in your how, economics class. That's what yeah. I mean. I've never <laughs> learned how to do my taxes in high school, which is one thing I should have learned. And I think this is an awesome opportunity for the students to learn real life how to budget, what happens, the consequences. Why don't Why don't that just be a thing that teachers that, have that to teach? That would be a great lesson they, because they're going through it right now. Everybody wants to be a teacher. Not everybody. But a lot of kids want to be teachers when they grow up. There's an they awful want to make lot. a difference. They do. And so if you want to learn and you want to see the red flags and you want to go through stuff, this is real life experience. You're living it. You might as well teach it. Yep. That's not a bad idea at all. How can I another stupid question? <laughs> Tell your mom not to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> this one comes in a disclaimer. <laughs> where, where is where is the responsibility um of of people like the business administrator who retired like where like where does that fall it's like it's like oh you can make all these and and in my estimation terrible decisions and then leave so then everyone else is on the on the hook for it yeah i i find even though the board is the one that votes on the budgets every year i don't know how it's possible for any business manager in good conscience to say year after year after year yeah we could, yeah i have no problem with us borrowing our way out of this one how do you, how do you let people who blatantly have no who has had a fiscal background we have paige uh, cagnetti on the board now with an mba from harvard but nobody else had had very much fiscal experience before and that's not it, to say that it's a, it's it's a no, fault it's, it's not just necessary. to say they just don't have say, the experience but what i'm saying is as a business manager now your responsibility is is now greater to explain to these people the consequences of borrowing to get out of a problem and 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 i don't feel like that's something that occurred because i mean it's common sense for us but if you're a business manager, you're like, you're going to know that those pension payments are going to go up. So you should budget for that. And you're going to know that healthcare costs don't ever go down. So you got to budget for that. And you're going to know that that there are raises and those are quantifiable because you know the percentages that people are going to go up. There's so contracts have, to, to tell you so that. So you have to, so, so you, you mm-hmm. budget for that. So you could, you should be able to have with minor variations, realistic projections for five years out. Now, of course, they're going to get revised all the time. Mm-hmm. Everyone's budget gets revised. It's very normal. But how do you not have five years worth of budgeting plans that shows, oh, yeah, that this ends with uh, the district blowing up? Mm-hmm. And how do you not say that? You're like, oh, if you guys decide to borrow this year, we're screwed next year. Any competent business manager would know that. So he knew that because I don't think he's dumb, but he didn't. Where was there any public statement? Where was there, hey, board, you probably shouldn't do this or we're all mm-hmm. screwed? You know, and well, there was a team, any- like, like objectively, he's supposed to be the one to say that. I yeah. mean, and and I- when you're trusting and working together with all these people, you would hope somebody would say yeah. that because if you're not on top of it, then that's their responsibility. Well, let's anyway. use sports at the metaphor as the metaphor, right? No one usually knows who the tackle is on the team, but he has a purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he 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 has zero re- reservations about telling the quarterback, "Don't go that way." Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes very good. I'm sense. I'm losing my fight. Don't go that way. Yep, perfect. Why did he w- w- like? The excuse is I just I'll, I just shot where they aimed me. Yes, and he actually gave that excuse quite publicly quite recently. So uh, you know about the uh, you know Dan Sansky you know getting the 
just getting healthcare, even though he wasn't an employee and just getting massive salaries, even though he wasn't an employee of the district. So Chris in total, Kelly, in total, how much? So a uh, documentable is, is about 700 grand, but he, this ha this has been going on for, I think 12 years. They only have seven years worth of documentation and they how don't do have, have how do you not have five years of documentation? Because you're only legally required to keep seven, and, and if it you would burn the rest, and that's what they did. Yes, they got. Well, that's the thing. There's no in a, in the era of computers, you should have all the records forever. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they don't, and uh, because like somebody literally goes into the file from from 2010 and hits delete. Yes, even though it takes up like four megabytes on your computer. Yes. Which, if you're teaching statistics and probability, is a dumb idea, and you should be taking the things from the past and using them as kind as of as your a guide to the future. future. Yeah, well, <laughs> but so, what do we know, right? Yeah, so, so <laughs> we're <laughs> stupid artists. <laughs> yeah, so so I like flowers. Sure, <laughs> Chris Kelly from the Times calls Greg Sunday, the former business uh, manager, and says, "What's the deal here?" And he basically says, "I do what the board tells me." Ah, uh, it's uh, what is that? What? Uh, yeah. That's what he said. He said, they told me to do it and I did it. Is, what is that? Is that called the Nuremberg defense? Mm -hmm. Not, not, not that. It's, it's but, very, it's, it's to very close II. to being like, that's what Himmler told me. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I yeah. just I did, did it. Yeah. And that the thing is. I hate, that, I hate, I hate when people make World War II references I know. involving like Hitler. I know. But it's the easiest way to understand well, it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and I, I, and you hear the Nuremberg defense. I, I, I like it because everyone's like, well, I was just told to do it. So I did it. Like, that's a dumbass answer. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's very stupid and it, and it smacks of a lack of integrity. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have it in you to quit, stand yeah, up for yourself. Even, just say quit. something. Well, no, no, don't quit. Just speak up. Yes. Yeah. Quitting is the extreme, especially if it's morally yeah, but, but, but or ethically if, but if, questionable. Yeah, but if he can't, you know, if he if he's if he's getting, and you know, it's all politics. But if he's getting railroaded and say like don't, like you should be seen, not heard, quit. Because if you're not going to be heard, what's your purpose? Yeah, it, you know, it, but you could be heard different ways anymore. It's not like yeah, and and um, you know. I know that I'm a different animal, but if I were in that situation and I wasn't getting any, anywhere with the board. I would call a newspaper. Like, look, mm -hmm. this is happening and it shouldn't be happening. Mm -hmm. Because, and, and here's the thing, and maybe it's just because of my union involvement, but you get cover then. You know, if they come at you, it's blatantly retaliation and you probably have a legal case. Right. So, you know, use avenues open to you to make to make sure that the right thing happens. Mm -hmm. And and that just didn't happen. And and I understand that right now we're just talking about the past and we probably should not be. But, you know. Uh, history class, it teaches you how to not make the same yeah. mistakes Touché. in I'm, the future. It's true. Touché. Yes. They say <laughs> Sorry, you're destined Tom. to repeat Yeah, that was really dumb of me to say. I, I regret know. it. <laughs> but no, if. if Mama he, Borthwick, if you're listening, your son said that. <laughs> but <laughs> if, if you don't, if you don't do something about it, then the next person who come in is probably just going to either do the same thing if not worse so it's like you have an opportunity to say something and make it maybe better or to stop it in general i wouldn't just run away i'd at least try and like he said take my avenues and see what i could do like i said if it was morally or ethically questionable i mean then somebody else will go in and then it could you have no say I mean, aren't business managers supposed to take moral ethics classes and stuff oh come on i mean now. I'm, I'm sure anyone <laughs> with a degree has taken some kind of an ethics course one mm -hmm. would hope all yes. right, well, I don't want to poo poo on him <laughs> yeah. all the time, but well, no. So, but but, I mean, honest, there's honestly, a lot of fault honestly, there. he's a gateway. Yeah, there's a lot of fault there. It doesn't matter if the board told him to do something he shouldn't have done. He shouldn't have done it. So that's a bad excuse. the it, The thing is, ultimately, and is that a violation of anything anywhere? Well, this has been referred to the attorney general's office, mm -hmm. so they're probably going to have questions for him. Really? And then you have to answer for them. Yeah, so because he signed he signed the checks. Mm -hmm. Why'd you sign those checks? I was told to. <laughs> Did you know it was illegal? <laughs> That'd be the next question I ask. <laughs> you know, like, like, come on. Hitler never played Risk as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, the follow-up. Did you know that you could not? I mean, but I what's did that what the they Dave told Ch me. Wait, is that the Dave Chappelle thing where he's, he said, I was, you know, I drive it around with my, my white buddy and he goes, uh, he goes, the cop came up and he goes, uh, officer, I did not know that I could not do that. <laughs> and Dave was like smooth. <laughs> I mean, that's not, but that's not a good defense. No, it's, it's not. Just, it's just, it's just playful trickery with words. Yes. So I, I think he's probably going to be dealing with a little bit of scrutiny. Yeah. So 
you know. I, and I'm, running, I'm sure, is a, a red flag. <laughs> yes, yeah, ran. I'm, I'm I didn't ask, but I just left. Yeah, I'm, see, I'm, see I'm done. Bye. I'll be, yeah. in, I'll, I'll be in Naples. That's a coward. And he's been there That's for, a coward. He's been there for a really long time, um, tw- probably over 20 years. So he's going to know a lot. So the attorney general, I'm hoping uh, the investigation is, is thorough, but it's, and, you know, he's probably going to. Craig Sunday is going to be getting a couple of phone calls, but be, beyond that, though, the the thing that I I want to if if I were to wrap everything up into a neat little bow and say here's what I think needs to happen. That was going to be my next question. Yeah, I think the board needs to be public about h- how they're going to fix things uh, in the long term, like how they're going to bring these back. I think they need to make a statement why they think librarians should go. I want to hear the logic. I mean, behind I, that. like, why are you? And this is not a knock. Like, why are you so hard up on this on this librarian thing? Like, like. Like, like, oh, can we rephrase that? What gives you the right to say that? Uh, oh, well, a lot, aside from just okay, being it's... a functional, literate human. Um... <laughs> nice. <laughs> they're more, they're but, more than no, a periodic no, but, but, table. But, but here's the thing. Are, like, I, I, am, I am know, asking – so I'm what? asking this question because anybody who's going to say Tom doesn't know what he's talking about, why oh, do you God. know what you're talking so about? So first of all, I'm an English teacher. It's my job to interact directly with librarians. And I said earlier, they they are better than me. And it is my job to be able to research. They are far better than me at that. Information literacy in these days, it are kids read things online and they're like, oh, it's true. It was printed and it sounds authoritative. Therefore, it is real. They don't differentiating between what is fact and what is Fiction. opinion yeah. is is very hard for adults let alone young people and we need them to be in contact with librarians whose specialty this is to teach them that skill we need educated functional literate kids who can look at the world and make valid inform judgments, um, the best kind of judgments that they can make. They can't do that if they've never been taught it. And and a lot of people are going to say, well, do, do that in English class. You need a master of library science. There's, there's that, 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 I think that's what people don't realize. Like yeah, the, yeah. a teacher, like I, I don't a librarian isn't somebody who's like, Here's oh, the, there's a job I'm opportunity. Gonna, I'm putting a book in, in, on a shelf. No, right. mm-hmm. librarians have assistants that do that. What librarians do is they teach kids how to find information quickly and well and how to evaluate it. That is beyond an essential skill in our age where kids deal with information overload. Adults deal with information overload. How how many times have we had, you know, a crazy aunt who types in all caps with poor grammar <laughs> share an article that is just blatantly untrue? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that skill is so necessary. I can't I can't stress it enough. And I witness it. And the other thing is I witness how kids l- f- deal with a they they have their love of reading fostered by librarians. I, I have to teach a class. I have to teach them the X, Y, and Z. But if a kid says, I, Mr. B, can I go to the li- library? I, I want to get a book. Do you know what you're going to get? No, I'm going to ask the librarian. Because the librarian gets to know you, gets to know your tastes. And it is the job of a librarian to say, it's it's the same kind of, inf- it's a different kind of information literacy, but it's the same skill. Find something that is relevant to you. So instead of it being relevant to a paper or whatever for research, it's relevant to who you are as a person. I think you're going to love this book. Mm-hmm. I'm going to use the late fees that I got to buy this book that I know is just for you. Th- and then think about that kid who, who meets that librarian who went out of the way to do that for them. Mm-hmm. You'll never forget that. Yes. I, I love my librarians. And they've, for- they've also even, I, my, the librarians I've dealt with have helped me to research online with like Google books and everything else. So that after you don't have an access to the library, you still have these really good the ways to do it. And Google books, I still use it all the time. Yeah. I love looking up all the historical stuff and there's so much more being put on every single day. And I only know how to find them because librarians have taught me. And that's the thing. It's a skill. It mm-hmm. doesn't go away and mm-hmm. it doesn't stop being necessary. So you walk out of a school without that skill or, or not having engaged with, like I, with, like I said, information literacy, you're going to go out and you're going to literally be an ignorant person. And we're going to create a generation of uninformed, poor critical thinkers who whatever they read in their Facebook feed is truth. You know, and they're not going to understand that that there's a very big difference between opinion and fact, and it and we do because it's happening on a national scale right now. Librarians are way more essential. I don't see how any anyone on that board can logically think that librarians could go away because of the internet. Mm-hmm. I mean, is that is that is that the, the I, temperature? I, I don't it, it, I don't think it's quite so simple as what I just said. Um, but you know, one director is like, well, Abington does it. 
Uh, just because somebody does something doesn't mean everybody has to do it. Yeah, and, well, that's the know, other, like, but that's the other mentality in this town where it's like, well, we've done that for years. I know, and, and people get right. too comfortable, you know. And they always, everybody wants to be Disneyland, but nobody wants to be Walt Disney. Like, but if Walt Disney didn't do this stuff, there wouldn't be Disneyland. Yeah, the other, the other thing is, uh, Abington, while uh, they're the gold standard, and, and that's the not that's not to mock Abington. Look at me, <laughs> I <know>. well, <laughs> Abington. Well, I'm a Western Wayne grad. Well, let me you'll get my disgusted tone in a second. It has nothing to do with Abington. It, it has everything to do with Abington and Scranton are two entirely different animals. You can't compare them. You can't. Please stop. Mm -hmm. Just d don't. It's literally apples and orangutans. Yeah, yeah you cannot. Yeah. Not only that, you just you can't use them as a model for what to do here. You can't. They're not even remotely demographically similar. They're the size. It come, the, Socioeconomic is silly. totally different. It, it's it's silly. And, you know, I'm going to tell you one very positive thing about the Scranton School District that people look at me like I'm nuts when I say this. I'm going to send my my son very proudly to Scranton schools. There's not a question in my mind. A lot of friends of mine in the past decade, you know, I'm 35 now, so everyone's having babies. Yeah. I Because I'm a teacher and because I'm involved, everyone's like, where do I send my kids to school? Where do we move to go to a good school district? Uh, and I just say Scranton. And they're like, what? Mm -hmm. That's awful. Scranton's the worst. Like, I thought you were going to say like Abington or North Pocono. Which of those two, should, where should I send my kids Scranton. I'm sending mm -hmm. my kids to Scranton. And again, like, what is wrong with you? Because of Scranton's size, it has more extracurricular offerings and more course offerings than anywhere. It does. Period. You know, I took a computer music class in, in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. In the year 2000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have a lot of those opportunities at Western Wayne. I might, both of my children attend Western Wayne too. And that's the reason why I chose to come back home to raise my children here because I had great opportunities, which afforded me to go. I've been to 50 countries and I've, you know, been to school. I went to Oxford University. I mean, like, if it wasn't for the push and everything else, I have my master's as well. And it's in journalism. I'm, I'm a writer, but it's, you know, You've got to instill things here and you've got to do all of that here yep. because and you, everybody else can go wherever they want you and need you can do whatever you want. But I'm a proud Western Wayne grad. My children are Western Wayne. And I mean, like I went to Oxford. You can do anything you want, but you need to have those things to the build bedrock. your foundation. Yep. I, ex I completely understand and agree with you. Yeah. He's screwed. I, I, I don't think so, but well, two things. First off, the just to reiterate, for people, and I don't listening. mean we. I mean the kids. Yeah, I, I, yeah. The, well, so this is what I they care about. What happens? Well, this, to them. So I'm, let me mm -hmm. run down what they have and why Scranton is great and why they're they're we're cutting ourselves off at the knees here. You know, you want to take Latin. You could do that in Scranton, West Side, and Scranton High, and or Scranton Prep. I believe those are the only places you can take Latin. That's the foundation of of the All romance language. Of, yeah. of of romance languages. Yeah. yeah. So. Knowledge of, of Latin help, helps you learn other languages. That Again, you talk about bedrock. That's mm -hmm. linguistic bedrock. But we can do that here. You know, German. You, t you start taking foreign language in sixth grade in the Scranton School District. That is amazing. That's incredible. That, uh, oh, my God. I wish that I had that. Of course. Me too. I, I, they, when I... I think what it, I was in eighth grade. I think they, they offered French. Um, I took French in eighth grade. But... <laughs> They, all, I we is, all I think of is Pepe Le Pew. So. Yeah, yeah. Who, uh, Le Pur. Yeah. yeah, but when you start them off sooner with that stuff, they, they instills uh, in yeah, them like faster. My, well, you know, I I can speak some Italian, and it's because my grandmother spoke to me when I was a kid, because that's just how your brain works. You can pick up on linguistic mm -hmm. structures. I, so I speak Italian to my son, and I would like him to, to learn more languages. Mm -hmm. And And you can't do the sixth grade Spanish anywhere but Scranton. You know, what, but so 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 think about those opportunities. What are, what are good things? Us, what are good things that they got going on? So that that and 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 are any of these good things that you're about to mention at risk? Yes. So you've got you've got the the language opportunities. You've got the the, the extracurricular opportunities. You've got the musical opportunities. You know, it's millions. Of, not not that you need to bribe people with millions of studies, but you know, so many studies have shown that if you can play an instrument, you do better at math. Mm -hmm. It's just, and it makes sense because music, the relationship Root, between yeah. notes, you should is have entirely never put the flute and the piano then. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the thing is, so you get an instrument in fourth grade. An instrument, you know, if if you if you qualify for it, you you're, you're either in chorus, band, or strings, and they put you through if you want all the way through till, till graduation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember just sitting on the, the stage with the orchestra and the band every, every year in high school that 
They're huge. They're impressive. Scranton's chorus, the Knights' chorus. Oh my God! They're phenomenal. Yes, they are phenomenal. They do the Santa Parade. Yeah, they're incredible. They're, they're, like beautiful, like gorgeous, mm-hmm. amazing vocalists, and that those Good teacher are, too. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, exactly. And those are at risk now because when you so cut let me let me. So if I go to if I go to a game in September and there's no marching band, is it possible there's no marching band there? No, there'll be a marching band, but. It, year after year it will start to get smaller because the thing is you're fostering this, this, these talents, you're fostering them. And if you cut them off it, to save money in the middle school, you're looking at three years where they're not, where they're either a not touching it or B barely getting it. They, they went from get getting rid of it entirely to now they'll, they'll get a little of it. And that's not enough. They need to look at, look at this window. That's an oboe. <laughs> yeah. I played that too. Experience has happened. Now move on. Good. You've yeah. had exposure. Move yes. On. Yeah. You've been exposed. Yeah. They'll yeah. just pile the instruments in front of the lunchroom and then look at these and now have lunch. So what? That's what, terrible. What? Hmm. <sighs> yeah. So though, you're going to watch the chorus program shrink and and think about how many kids' lives were were positively impacted by by being involved in a chorus. I mean, even if you didn't play an instrument, even if you didn't sing. Who has bad memories? Mm-hmm. Like, like of to that. me, like it's to me, but to me, like chorus and band were like, I really, I'm really not good at sports. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, that's your thing. And, but even you know, and you- I and so so in my example, like just mark X, Y, and Z as you know, chorus, band, sports. X and Y are just they just replace the people who can't do Z. Like it's 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 okay. Like some people just can't throw a ball or catch a ball or run. Well, and you get that stuff in gym class, you know. Onto- yeah, but, but they're, so they're still getting exposure. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like okay, like you know, that's still being part of a team. It's, it's foundation like, building. It's yes. not American Pie. And if when they everybody don't goes like to band it, camp. if they don't like it, it's okay too. At least they tried it, and you that, know. And, and then they can go on to something else. And that team thing. I mean, th- so think about it. I, I remember in seventh grade, Mrs. Gallagher uh, played the Pachelbel Cannon from memory, and I everyone in in class was like mesmerized. And so when you think about playing a piece like that, like that's done in a round and, you know, these couple kids are playing and then these couple kids come in and it works. And then the next couple kids come in and it works. Think about that as a collaborative form of create, like you are working together to create something beautiful in a group. Mm -hmm. That that's an important life lesson. Mm -hmm. No, just, just, just think about that as a kid. That's awesome. Like, think cool about, that but think like, about the kid it. who's playing. That's awesome. Like, like, we, what we, sense of like satisfaction are, yeah. and, and we're and pride. making this. Yes, and it's amazing. And we need each other. And yeah. I and I hate and I hate to like be like you know harp on like sports, but you know I I just you know I was kind of athletic, but but like to me like of course I'm gonna be you know partial to the arts. Like that's just yeah, that's just and, me. And and I'm not saying that there and neither of us are saying that there isn't value to sports. Of course there are. You know, we're camaraderie, collaboration. I'm oh. v- I was very happy to have our art on the Super Bowl. Yes, that's right. <laughs> oh yeah, that's our commercials. Yeah. But sorry, like we got like th- there was that was a great thing. Like I'm telling you at the end of that like I it was painful, but I there was pride. Mm-hmm. Of course. I was like this is good. There there's another day where I don't have to drink. <laughs> you know, but I'm my fear is that no one else is going to like we're taking that away for the sake of people who are irresponsible with money. Yes. Yes. Adults and, that and have that, already had their shot. Yeah. And that's and that's a unconscionable. We uh, should have the kids do the budget. Yeah. We should. Go. Like that's I said, the class it's, project. it's a good class. Yeah. What do you guys want? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you want to keep this or do you want to keep that? But if nothing else, just go through and teach them exactly what's going on and see what the consequences are if you're not. I really don't attention. think that the Scranton School District is going to allow their budgeting in their class. Well, it would be it would be a really. <laughs> I'd be amazed. That's if they a did life it. lesson. I'm telling you. Like, and they're living it right now. So you'd be stupid to not take advantage. I would love of something to see like it that. happen. <laughs> Can you imagine and, and the that? only reason why it wouldn't is because of egos and pride and, yeah. and the stupidity getting in the way. It, but I mean, it's happening. It's in the newspaper. It's everywhere. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's going to board meetings. Everybody's saying something. So maybe we should be teaching it too. I mean, it's a great life lesson. In yeah, my and and a lot of the kids are going to the board meetings, which is another thing. That and I, that's I awesome. Love. They're getting a voice. Yep. I mean, they're finally starting to get heard. This is how you make change. I think, uh, I mean, if if we were to to close on on a semi positive note, I think that community involvement that we're seeing 
is going to, in the end, positively impact whatever decision the board makes. If there's one thing politicians do not like, it is pressure and attention and negative attention. Uh, so they're, I guarantee you they're listening and they're feeling it. And, and, you know, if some of them are listening to this, they're probably going to be pissed at me for being critical of them. And, and the, yeah, but, 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 but the, but the thing is that that but, no 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 but listen that's a good thing mm -hmm. that means they're reacting and they're listening and they're listening and and so they they, could, they might resent the, the negativity or feel like it's not their fault and they shouldn't get the blame and they'd be right to feel that but again like I said earlier they have to own it and if if you're gonna if you're gonna look and say I'm getting rid 51 people are not gonna have a job you know thousands of kids not, are not gonna have a program but like you have to you have to they're going to not want to feel that way real quick. Yeah. Explain to me when they're going to know what 51, uh, April 1st. So they're going to know April 1st, what 51 are going to be gone have, by August 31st. Yes. They have no choice, but to know then I thought some of them weren't going to know until like the week before August 31st. I, I mean, they can do, sh they could probably shuffle. Actually. Oof, you know what? That's a good point. So the furlough letters, technically all of them are getting laid off. Technically. They say they're only going to do 51, so they probably actually do have more time than April 1st. But they're going to do paper layoffs where it looks solvent. Yes. So the number of layoffs will will probably have to be determined by April 1st. And then who goes is – It's over the next four months. Is an open-ended question. They'll probably sit there and finagle that. Uh, How did they vote so fast and get the letters out so fast? Uh, so I believe the reason is you need to give a certain amount of notice before that before, deadline. Yeah, and so that they did it because of time constraints. Uh, it wasn't pretty. I mean, the day after, you know, administrators calling in people and saying, "Hey, you might not have a job next year. Um, you know, start looking." That like that has ruined, you know, morale. Real, 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 real quick, and then we'll and then we'll you know go home and try to change the world in other ways. Um, <laughs> what as, as a teacher and, and you talk, you know, you're, you know, I have friends and relatives who are teachers and what, how hard is it to try to be a positive influence and an educator while feeling like, you don't know if you're going to be able to provide for your family. So this is why teachers are a unique breed. Um, I'm going to bet you 95% of the kids didn't, wouldn't know that their teachers were, were suffering or feeling this way because we have no choice but to put on a brave face, like literally every day, no matter what's going on in our lives for them, you know? Cause that black Friday that happened, I heard there was a lot of teachers who had to like leave. Uh, I actually, I didn't hear, I didn't hear that. Yes. Uh, that's sad. But like the thing At is- At least half a dozen that I heard yeah, from so the, different the, schools. The, so the, the bottom line is I think, well, and I said, you know, a, a large percentage of them, but the morale is hurting, but teachers are, are good enough about keeping it in because every day I, I'm not dealing- Well, they're with, Irish. Yeah, there you go. A lot of them are Irish. That's but true. how? But how? But how detrimental is that to hold that in while trying to maintain a a, a brave face? Oh, it it sucks. It's awful. I mean, these people are are probably going home, you know, like staring blankly at the wall, wondering what the hell am I going to do with my life? Mm -hmm. You know that that's the impact. Yeah, a lot of them have kids, kids on the way. Yeah, that and and that's the saddest part because you're looking at the vast majority of them are going to be young people who are just starting out, and you're just going to say we're we're gonna we're gonna chop that future off right here for a little while, you know, good luck, you know? So I, I mean, mentally the morale is, you know, in the shitter, understandably. And, but, but they come to work every day and they do their job and they, and they work for their kids because, you know, teaching is a great job and everyone always bitches about you get summers off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, you know, there's a lot that goes into, you know, one forty five minute period dealing with 30 little, budding humans right you know they each of them has their own emotional hang-ups and problems that we could never even fathom and you're dealing with five sets of those or six sets of those a day i mean we're used to crisis management because teenagers and young kids they're always dealing with something so we we can handle it i mean it's not right i'm not saying you can't no it, i'm just saying it you sucks know. it's awful it's hard we're now the ones that are bottling up something when we know that the kids half the time are doing it too you know so maybe there's and i hear the kids are very upset too oh my god yeah they're having a hard time yeah because they know that they're going to lose their their teachers i mean you probably have a list both of you 
lists of like your top 10 favorite teachers who mm-hmm. I two of my, shaped my life. Yeah. yeah. Two, oh, I absolutely. had my English teachers at my wedding. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I still maintain my friendship with them. And now they both work with my wife and I see them all the time. It's mm-hmm. awesome. And, and, and I would never give that up for anything. And, and again, they were my Crete. They were my art. They were the arts teachers mm-hmm. for me. The, creative writing that's an art mm-hmm. you know and and that's the other thing I, I hope they don't get rid of stuff like like that i haven't heard any any court like elective cuts but i wouldn't be surprised if if something like that does happen but yeah i mean ultimately bottom line is for everyone kids parents and teachers it's awful so the board i think does understand the impact but maybe not excuse me the board understands that they are impacting things they're impacting things but Maybe they don't understand like the breadth and scope of it. That's why I keep harping. I mean, on the do you, I mean, do they? I mean, do they have to? I mean, at, at some point, you're like a triage surgeon, and you have to just have to like turn your emotions off. I mean, is I, that, that? I don't think. All, I don't know. I don't. Because members I, I speak I, to are, aren't like that. They're feeling. It. I know, but I'm trying. To, like I'm trying to understand and put myself in their shoes. And like, no, number one, I think all of us here can agree. Like, none of us wants to wear any of their shoes. Like it's not a it's not a good I position. Do it. Well, I, I know you do. <laughs> I would do it. Well, you're a maverick, and and he's very informed. So I, yeah, but I, I but mind but it. at the same time, it's like it's like you have. It, but I don't think like it doesn't seem to me that any of them. And I could be totally wrong, but I don't know if any of them like they want they wanted the position, but I don't I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm being naive and ignorant by by not thinking like what what the impact of it was going to have on their lives. Oh, I'm sure. I'm I'm sure none of them signed up for quite this much of a disaster. I, definitely. And I mean, it's a lot to ask. You have to feel for for them in, in some respects. It's a lot to ask. You're not getting paid. They probably spend, this is probably, this is definitely a second job for some of them. It's probably a second full-time job, you know, because that you're not getting paid for, you're not getting paid mm-hmm. for. So yeah, you can feel for them in that, in that regard. But and their they, actions are going to be and the they, outcome. But, and again, like, that's why I keep saying over and over mm-hmm. again, they have to own whatever happens. And they also have to understand that there will be negative consequences for their decisions. Mm-hmm. And it's their fault. You know, blame, there is no way to, you can't blame the past because we're, the past is gone. So it's right now. Yep. So, you know, I don't, oh, Kim, what, is there anything like good? <laughs> Well, like, they can make good. This, they like, can make it good. Like you said, there's a lot of things they can I, do. I, I think I think that could some, soften the blow. I think in some respects they're going to have to do. They're going to have to use, you know, a samurai sword and not a scalpel. I think they kind of already whipped that sword out and yeah, it job seems like it. <laughs> Fifty one. 51 victims. So just make sure that we're not in that position again, ever again. And, and to make sure is that there a way, is there a way to back. save these jobs? Um, I, I, yes, I, I firmly believe, and I don't understand why the board does not. I firmly believe that the, the, the voluntary sabbaticals that I discussed with you guys last time I was here are a totally viable option to save tons of jobs and, mo- and way more money than they're saving with the current furloughs. Uh, and just because it's such a significant savings that I haven't seen explored, I'll reiterate the way it works is, and we do it at Riverside. So it's a fact it happens and it can be done and it can be done successfully to save jobs. You take a voluntary leave of absence. Lots of teachers would do it. A lot of young mothers do it at Riverside and you get either a one-time check for 3000. That's, that's just thank you. Or you can get a year's worth of healthcare benefits. And some of them take the money. Some of them take the benefits, whatever their job is guaranteed when they return and you don't pay. So think about this. Now you're not paying a salary. You're not, you're you're not paying unemployment, unemployment. You're not paying into social security or the pension. You get all those costs gone immediately to get that kind of cost savings. You have to be laid off for over a full year. So why are we not doing more of that? I don't know. And they could save. Do you think there'll be 51 teachers that take them up on that? Uh, no, probably not. Uh, we, but it's, but it's a lot. I think like five or 6% of our staff did and 51 teachers would be a little, maybe 8% of their staff, 7%. But well, let's say, you know, 35, 40, it would save, it would save a massive amount of jobs, massive Mm -hmm. amount of jobs. Um, and then, and then they could say when this teacher comes back, the program comes back. So you, you have the built in guarantee of, of return. So that, that I, I, is that a pie in the sky idea? No, we do it. We do it. Mm-hmm. It's why I'm so frustrated. <laughs> we not only do we do it, we've been doing it for I think three or four years now. One woman, she she's 
take, she's taken it every year since it was offered and just grew her family and had kids, you know, so she's able to set when she's, when her kids are old enough to go to school, she can come back and work. She'll, she'll go back to work. Mm -hmm. And, and that actually is awesome. You know, sure. No one wants to work with, not, not have a salary, but you have a guarantee of a job in your former position that you can return to. And that's a wonderful thing. Does that mean you can get another job in the interim? Um, I guess you could. Yeah. Well, like what I'm saying is, is like, yeah, I don't see why I can not. go work up at AC more for the next two mm-hmm. years and then come back and yeah, teach again. Mm-hmm. There you go. And and I'm sure a lot of the, especially untenured teachers, the new teachers, I'm sure they, they would say like, give me the healthcare for a year. I'll get the job back after the year. In the meantime, I'll, I'll find something. And then you could always have a simple clause in there that says, if you get a job as a teacher in another district, you're the, out. The agreement's terminated. Mm-hmm. The, like there's easy stuff. That's easy stuff. You know, the nuances are not compli- complicated enough that they're going to say no. Now, I wonder if there's like turmoil in the business office with the retirement of, of Mr. Sunday. So maybe they're like, oh, we can't look at this weird thing just now. Maybe that's the reason. I actually don't know the real reason. But the fact that it has not come up or gone anywhere boggles my mind. Jobs I mean, I, I mean, money, if, I mean would, would this be the first thing you went at? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying that you're like the the – the grand arbiter and understand. No, no, no. If I were on there, that would, related. there are lots of things I would do, but that would be priority number one because it's so easy, so immediate, um, and can be renewed every year. So let's say we have a pro- crisis next year. We're like, okay, we're going to, we're going to offer this again. Job saved when you come back. And some, I'm sure some would come back and new ones would go out. You know, like if my wife and I were to have another kid, she would take it, <sighs> you know? Mm-hmm. So boom, savings, instant savings. And, and so, it's so friggin' blatant. Like it's right there. Yep. It's like there's the lifeline, there's the rope. Yeah, yeah. And it's not it's not like a holy grail will save everything, but it'll make it better. To help. And it's a lot yeah. better. It's enough that I, I I'm actually my mind is boggled. And and no one can say they can't do it. Because we've done it at Riverside for years. It was a brilliant and innovative thing that they did to save jobs and they reuse it whenever they have budget problems. And we there are always takers at Riverside. We always have takers because there's always someone that wants to start a family and maybe spend an extra year home with their kid. You know, no problems with that. Will you, will you, will you come back after April Fool's Day? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Please do. When, when it's either going to be like, all right, I, you know, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, or it's going to be like, it's a disaster. Yep. I'm more than happy to tell you like it is. Are you going to keep fighting the good fight? Uh, Jesus, I don't think How I... much crap do you get? You know, not as much as I want. <laughs> Are you serious? You want more crap? But I love a fight, man. I love a fight. Is that the West Side in you? Probably. It's also the Lebanese. But he's also me. so smart. Everybody would start fighting with them, and then they'd realize how smart he is, and they'll be like, well, shut up. I don't and know about that. I don't like Borthwick uses words. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what he's talking about, damn it. <laughs> he, he does words good. I was, uh, I had, I uh, my whole day spent today was some some bigot or ass hat posted something in the Times, and I sent him the, I just posted the middle finger, so I don't even use words anymore. It's just emojis. <laughs> Wait, we could do an emoji podcast. That'd be yeah. great. No. <laughs> what happened? How do you hear emojis? Yeah. Well, hey, and that emojis. movie was terrible. I heard. Um All right, well, I don't Here's it seems hoping. like nothing's gotten better. Well, yeah, that's the update. Still a disaster. And uh Oh, the tire fire is still happening. Yeah. Oh, okay. And hope everybody took notes yeah. if you're if you're on the you know. Well, really, I just want to reiterate real quick that like I like nobody's really to me I don't. I don't see us aiming our arrows at anybody in particular, no. or any no, group no, no. in particular. I think we it's just care about the, the future of the area's yeah, children. I, I don't even know. This isn't a vendetta, but it's just we want that you know the best. And in, in I'm sorry, you're in public them. office, like. Oh, you got yeah. yeah. You need thick skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you gotta you gotta deal with it. It's, it's terrible, yeah. and you have, don't deal, have you have to deal with jerks like me and you and her. Yeah, because because we're gonna criticize you. And I, and hopefully I'm not, you know, I'm not wrong in my criticism. It's constructive. If they took some of our suggestions, things would be better. Simple. And uh, I hope I know that some teachers are happens. upset that, that they, they haven't looked at that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, so. or maybe they looked at it and just, cause I, cause I, I know, know, cause I know there's about 120 teachers who got that letter who, who would have been like, that would have been a, I would have, I would have happily rather idea. gotten that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. <sighs> All right. Well, it's been a pleasure. I care about you tremendously. Yes, I yeah. do too. Thank you so much. <laughs> my, my pleasure. Hey, make sure, uh, 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 make sure that you're, I don't know. I was going to say something witty and then I kind of was going down the ski slope, forgot I was skiing. <laughs> it happens. All right. Happy All Sunday. Right, that's All right. it. See you guys. Thanks for listening. Bye.